We're back. This is Dear Wolf Christian, the podcast. My name is Jason, and today we are going to jump right in. We have a pretty interesting video. Um, it's really hard to even articulate what we're going to watch. If you're a follower of Dear of uh, Wolf Preacher Clips, you probably already saw it. It's the video by Tim Keller. And yeah, I, I don't actually know how he has... Um, gotten this far away. This is something I want to point out. Since we're talking about Timmy K, I'm going to call him Timmy K now. Since we're talking about Timmy K and what he said about missions, I just find it interesting. He lives, or rather his church is in an area, highly densely populated area, and he has multiple church sites. He has multiple ministries. Um, and it's such like that. And I do think it's interesting because he calls out RUF campus ministry during this video. And he actually has RUF as part of his uh, ministries that he supports. I really don't understand why he did this. But what we're going to do first, we're going to jump into God's word. We're going to start with the scriptures. And so, yeah, so this is RUF Reformed Affiliated College Ministries. And I, I just find it interesting that he would call these call out missionaries but I, I have a reason why I believe so let's go second Corinthians 16 this is Paul writing to the church of Corinthians now concerning the collection of the saints as I directed the churches of Galatia so you also are to do on the first day of each week or rather every week each of you is to put aside so something aside and store it up as he may prosper so that there will be no collecting when I come. And when I arrive, I will send those whom you will credit by a letter to carry your gifts to Jerusalem. If it seems advisable that I should do also, they will accompany me. So collecting of gifts for missionaries is pretty common. I mean, it's literally some of the first, what you see with the first church, you literally see it in Acts. Okay, so let's jump over here to 2 Corinthians 11. He's still writing to the same church. Down, um, He's actually talking in verse 8 is where we're going to talk. We're going to focus, but I'm also going to start with verse 7. As I always say, feel free to read the entire passage. There's nothing wrong with reading all of God's word. But we're going to start at chapter, verse 7. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preach God's word to you for free? free of charge i robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you and when i was with you and i and was in need i did not burden anyone for the brothers who came from macedonia supplied my need so i refrained and will refrain from burdening you in any way now it seems pretty consistent that Giving gifts to missionaries, supporting missionaries is a, I, I don't think you're making a stretch to say that that's a biblical concept. Like, oh, yeah, there, there's reason to believe that the Bible supports that. I'm just going to let him, let, let Timmy K say it. I'm going to let him have his day in the sunshine. Go ahead, Tim. Tell us what you think. Systemic racism is um, the uh, the traditional evangelical approach to fundraising in which you ask uh, Christian staff workers to raise their own support. Asking Christian staff workers to raise their own support. Now, he says staff workers, but later he says missionaries. I don't know how, if there's a difference. I don't know churches primarily. Maybe And maybe they do. Maybe they do. I don't know churches primarily that have staff persons that work on staff that have to raise their own funds. I know there's missionary organizations that do that, but I don't know, like a church, like XYZ Baptist Church on the corner here. All the staff people have to go raise their own funds. I don't know about that. But the, the, the notion to call it systemic racism is where I really think he's made a lap too far. But let's continue. Okay. So I see that as systemic injustice. In spite of the fact that uh, there is, uh, frankly, our denomination does it both for missionaries and for um, RUF, Reform University Fellowship. Uh, the 
they ask missionaries to raise their own funds. I don't see why that's wrong. But wait till you see why it's wrong in Tim Keller's mind. Reality is after 50 years of watching people do this, um, I, I never realized, in, in, in other words, it's not just African Americans, but Hispanic and Asian Americans, even Asian Americans who've got a, had a couple generations of people in this country and everybody's a professional, they still can't raise their own support. It, it, it took me 50 years to realize that accumulated wealth in your family and friendship networks takes generations to develop. Gen okay. The idea, you know what, we're gonna do something right on the fly. I thought I was going to do it, but I didn't. We're going to look at minority buying power. And we'll go with 2020. 2020 was a really weird year. Let's go with uh, consumer buying power is more diverse than ever. And this is a UGA article. Minority markets have 3.9 trillion buying power. Let's look right here. I, I meant to pull this article up before. People of color have more spending power than ever, report says. And just, just scanning through, just scanning through. And I think this is interesting. This one's actually in Georgia. What do you know? Okay, just scanning through. Let's look at this analysis that they bring up because I want to bring. Oh, this refers back to the UGA article. Perfect, perfect. UGA Economist has charted the explosive growth of Hispanic, African American, and Asian American markets since 1990. I'm going to actually put a link to both of these in the description. It's fair to read that African Americans. Asians, Hispanics, people of higher melanin count are not broke. They're not primarily broke. Listen to what Tim Keller said, though. Go back and listen to what he said. He's saying these people don't have money. He literally said that. Watch this. It, it, it took me 50 years to realize that accumulated wealth in your family and friendship networks takes generations to develop. Generations. So recent immigrants or African Americans who have been here from the beginning, but who because of slavery, then Jim Crow laws, then redlining, then everything, is they've just, they've got no money in their networks. They just don't. That, what I think happened, and there's a wonderful article, I mean, a documentary by Conversations That Matter, and I'll put a link up in the description as well. I'll probably put a link somewhere up here, like all those other people do. And they mentioned, they do a video on what happened to Tim Keller and they give like the history of him. Man, when you really bend over backwards in order to support this critical race theory idea, systemic racism, systemic injustice, you go out of your mind. Like, listen to what he said. Black people don't have money. I, 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 and he said this, I mean, and, and the thing is, please understand, I have said it before, critical race theory is racist by its nature. It is racism. And they literally say things like it turns people into, or maybe exposes them as racist or, or true partiality. This is partiality. To say that black folk don't have money, what are you talking about? Now, I think a much better question or much better point is that people don't see the effort, the necessity to support missionaries. Now, that is what I think is the problem. Far more than people of high melanin accounts don't have money in their networks. I got to let him finish spinning this out. And if you send them out there and say, raise your own support, they can't. So then what happens is in so many of these evangelical organizations, they basically are because they can't do that. They never move up and and really become uh, part of the power. And I, I do think it's interesting. You won't hear and maybe I, and check me out. Let me know if you timestamp it. Where did Tim mention any Bible?
in this. Any scripture that supports this idea notion that you should support people based upon their melanin content. Let me know because I missed it. And notice I also said you move up in power. What is that? I thought you were trying to preach the gospel. I, I thought missionaries were supposed to preach the gospel and establish churches. I, maybe I'm wrong. And uh, has our denomination and our, you know, you know, participate in that? Yes, it still is. That's a pretty uncomfortable thing to say. Now, I'm going to pick a fight with Tim Keller because maybe you don't know this newsflash. I'm a Presbyterian. And I'm a PCA Presbyterian. So me and Tim are in the same denomination. And he's full of hot air. My church supports an orphanage in Haiti. And we have supported them for many decades. And that gentleman comes. He comes twice a year. Um, sadly, in 2019, their pastor was assassinated in Haiti. So their new pastor has come once. And then we had COVID. So he's come even during COVID to... Um, give a report to meet the people and he leaves with money or as Eric Mason said drip hallelujah so he leaves with money and he is a high melanin count uh, brother he would look he probably would pass as my own brother and um, my church is of the lesser melanin content and we graciously supply two times a year a um container truck or a container shipping container full of food to send to the orphanage even after they had a um, horrible um, um, unrest even when they had a horrible earthquake we still supported them and it flies right in the face of this foolishness that Tim Keller is saying the man uh, ministers to almost 90 orphans maybe I'll leave a, a link in I'll leave a link in the description so you can check them out uh, Reformation Hope and in Haiti. And what Tim is saying it bears no, it, it doesn't bear out in reality. Now, maybe his church doesn't. I don't know. I looked on his page. I don't see anything. But the notion that black folk can't raise funding is silly. It's just silly. But it, it fits his narrative that he wants to say, which is against systemic racism, systemic injustice. Okay. Um, but the fact is that if we started to say, oh, guess, you know what, we're going to totally change that. We're going to fund everybody centrally. We're going to raise money centrally and then just pay all of our workers. Now, the reality is that we w it's much harder to raise money that way. And it Wait, it's hard to go out and ask for money and funding. It's hard to centralize the funding spending. So is he basically cutting the legs off of missions? Is that what he's basically saying? I, I, I don't understand what he's even spinning out. And it's also, it takes more time and effort and all that. And so these mission organizations and denominations don't want to do it. And they won't even be open to it. But it's it's a version of systemic racism. Now, I don't know whether, whether everybody, my guess is a lot of people on your on the call, if you, unless you've been involved in the evangelical world for a long time, don't even maybe know what I'm talking about. Hardly. But I, every, but, I mean, either. Anthony does, and Susan and Jeff certainly do. Jay Witt does. And it's just a blind spot. And why can't we address that? Why can't we say, we're going to try to do something about that? You really could, frankly. I think there are, there are things you could do. So it's it's not like, it, but you, unless you have the discussions, these things, most of us, especially us white people, just sort of, this is the way it's always been done. And I'm not a racist, so how could you call that systemic racism? And every time... I have to say, every time I ever bring it up, I just never get any response from anybody. People just. I'm going to theorize that the reason you don't get any, no one really listens to you, Tim, because you're kind of like the crazy uncle at the barbecue. And it's like, oh, oh, Uncle Tim talking out, his, out of his ear again. OK. All right. Thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. OK, great. Because what you're saying doesn't meet reality. To say that black folk don't have money, to say that Hispanic people don't have generational wealth, to say that Asians don't have income is is ludicrous. One, to say that people can't so draw their own support because they're black or because they're a person of higher melanin content. And because following this logic, the only successful missionaries would be people who have high, less melanin. 
But what is a successful missionary? <laughs> he hasn't even explained what is successful. I would love to hear Tim Keller explain what a missionary is, period. What is a missionary? Because I don't believe that he has a solid answer, especially if you're going to build a foundation of systemic racism is the reason why missions don't work. I wonder, do you have do you have an understanding what the mission, what missions is? Hey, real quick, if you like this video and like this type of content, please do me a favor. Go down into the comment section and leave a comment. You can say something as simple as where you're from or maybe what your favorite ice cream is. But leave me a comment. It helps get this video out to other people that might like it as well. So thank you very much. Grace and peace. And let's get back to the video. Say so that's Tim's hobby horse. But I said, if you're non-white and you've tried to raise your own support in one of these organizations, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, to me, it was one of the things that proved the reality of, of the, 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 the hangover I and mean, just how deeply our past is affecting African-Americans now. Wow. You know, the whole idea that, well, that was in the past. And now, you know, it's it's a level playing field. Get out there and work hard. You know, it, it uh, that's gone in my mind. I began to realize, well, no, 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 it's. It takes generations for the, the, the playing field to become leveled, far more than we've had. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. So the reason I brought up buying power of minorities and pull up those two articles on the fly, I know I should have had those ready, but the reason I brought those up is simply this. People, especially Americans, Americans, even our poorest is richer than our than people in other countries here in America. That notion is silly. The problem is people don't want to support missions. That is the problem it has nothing to do with the ethnicity of the missionary it has nothing to do with the ethnicity of the sponsors, sponsors, but rather it's just the fact that people don't want to support missions and primarily because they they think that you're just going on a paid vacation um, for some people, but then also they don't see the value in it. If you're not preaching the gospel here, why are you going to go overseas and build water tanks or build buildings and not preach the gospel there? Oh, you're preaching the gospel here? Yeah, we want you to go over there and preach the gospel, help establish churches and elders and deacons and in in that in that country so that, that church can grow and flourish yeah we're about that but what he's talking about is to say that missions is hamstrung because of racism is silly i'm sorry there's no other way around it no other way that i'm gonna say it differently that's just silliness it's immaturity it's kindergarten and well i'm give him a little bit of credit it's third grade it's third grade name calling oh you're a racist it's systemic racism because i can't man get out of here the better question is, are these missions effective? Are these missions organizations effective? Maybe they're not. And that's maybe why people don't see. But then the third missing element is the fact that God is sovereign. What we're doing, what I'm doing in front of this microphone, what Tim Keller is allegedly doing at Redeemer in uh, New York, what everybody's doing is in, in the name of God only is only flourishes only grows only is successful because of god that's on god if a missionary does not raise the funding their their, their ultimate hope is not in somebody recognizing their melanin content and supporting them or somebody saying oh well systemic racism has kept you down we are going to fund you for 10 years no their ultimate hope is that they are serving god and they're there that God is going to provide. That is the reality of the matter. Tim Keller was at the cusp of being able to talk about the sovereignty of God and how God provides. But nope, he pushes it off and lays it at the altar of his God, systemic racism and systemic injustice. Yeah, I did say it. it's an it's an idol. It's a cult. And we see this so often that it's actually kind of. Like it's actually just glaring in our faces. This is another religion. So, yes, people. Now, I do admit that people don't support missions like they do, but it's not primarily because 
of their ethnicity is primarily because primarily because they don't see the value in it because they themselves don't see missions working even here sometimes i mean like just think like if you're at a name it claim it health and wealth church are you really seeing the fruit of that that you want that exported out somewhere else if really if you had a signs and wonders type of situation are you wanting to export that and what are you exporting what are you exporting so and then here if you're a critical race theory social justice warrior what are you exporting what are you exporting to africa what are you what are you exporting to a country that's uh mono ethnic like what are you exporting to them you can't. So I think that's why missions fail because a lot of the time the churches have probably failed. That's just my two cents. So Timmy K, man, dear Tim Keller, you are an elder um, in the faith and I pray that this bug that has bitten you, that you'll repent of it. The, the idea that there, um, systemic racism, systemic injustice, that you've just gulp down, I pray that you'll repent of it because you're missing the true opportunity to exalt and glorify and name Christ. Turn from it, sir. Turn. Run. You still can. I know that you have a rich history in a lot of uh, other ideologies, but Tim Keller, you can turn from that and you can accept Christ and his wonderful, beautiful, free gift of salvation. And his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Dear Christian, if you're following Tim Keller and you believe in systemic racism is a reason why missions aren't working or why missionaries can't raise funds, please stop. Just stop. Stop. It's, it's, it's not funny. It's not cute. And it's wrong. Just run from this. This is not a biblical teaching. This is not a, a God-honoring idea that Mr. Keller just espoused or that critical race theorists espouse. It's not. Christ is nowhere in it. Nowhere, nowhere to be found. Run from that. 